Hello everyone, this is Jiaxin Pan from the George Washington University. It is my pleasure to have this chance to present our work in ICPP. Our work is called DNA ARA, a deep neural network accelerator that using raster arithmetic and integrated photonics. Here is the outline of today's presentation. First, I will introduce our project and talk about the background. Then, I will discuss how exactly our computing engine is built and how it works. Next, I will discuss the performance evaluation of our system, and finally, I will conclude our work. Now, let's get started. Neural network applications are anywhere nowadays. Some of them require real-time analysis. However, they are computation intensive. They could include up to billion multiply accumulate operations. Previous research shows that Mac operation could cover more than 90% of the execution time. To better adjust this problem, we proposed the NNARA, a deep neural network accelerator using raster arithmetic based on integrated photonics. And here is the high level representation for the DNNARA system. To avoid the extra conversion between binary and RNS, we do the conversion only at the very beginning of the neural network. And then after all the computations are done, we will convert it back to the binary system. All the computations are done in the raster domain. And in proposed DNNARA system, we implement the accelerator in raster number system with integrated photonic. We are taking advantage from the wavelength division multiplexing, which is also called WDM. How exactly the RNS and WDM features help on our design? I will show you with a small example in block one here. So we can see here is a three by three matrix and a three and a one by three vector. In order to perform this uh, matrix vector multiplication at one time, we are going to need three RNS MVM hardware units. However, all of them are just working on exactly the same functionality. To further improve it, we are thinking, oh, why don't we just use WDM instead? So now we can only use one optical RNS MVM by encoding the light into different wavelengths. And then we can use this one hardware to perform three um, operations at the same time. As an overhead, we will need a set of filter to separate the result. And as for the raster number system, first of all, they are digit independent, which means all the calculation, um, there is no carry between the residues. And also, for raster number system, we can decompose a large number into smaller ones. They are small sized, and which is very good for um, photonic design, because the more optical component we need, the more power we are going to need. By using raster number system, we can decrease the power consumption here. Also, because um, the raster number system allows the system to run different digits simultaneously, we can increase the system parallelism. And so we can save the area, power, and hardware resources here. Now I would like to talk the background about the convolutional neural network and the raster number system. Convolutional neural networks are widely used in classification, for example, image recognition. There are several layers and functions inside a convolutional neural network, including the convolutional layers, activation functions, pooling layers, and fully connected layers. There could be up to a billion MAC operations that majorly coming from the convolutional layers and the fully connected layers. And in our work, we focus on the both functions and layers only. Next, I would like to talk about the raster number system RNS. In such a case, each number could be represented by its raster that is divided by a modulus. Here is an example. If we choose the moduli set as 2, 3, 5, and 7, then number 20 could be represented by 0, 2, 0, 6. It is derived by using 20 mod 2, 3, 5, 7, respectively. All the number in the range from 0 to all the products of the selected moduli set minus 1 is unique. And to maintain this uniqueness, the selected moduli should be relatively prime to each other. Also, we can um, represent a negative number in raster number system. 
and it will be similar to tooth complement. Um, you will going to need to use the um, selected modulo set to minus the positive representation. Here is an example for negative 20. And in the raster arithmetic, the key feature is that the computation of each digit are independent to each other. Oper operations are carried out on registers. Um, it applies for addiction and multiplication. It means that if we try to add x and y together, then each register, the addition or multiplication, are they totally independent to each other. So by this, we can incre increase our um, parallelism and we can run all the digits simultaneously. Now I would like to show you how exactly our accelerator is built. Here's the overview architecture for the proposed DNNARA chip. First, there is a binary to RNS converter that for the input data. Also, there is a RNS to binary converters for the output. The basic computing block is a tile, and every four tiles will be connected to a router. And in each tile, we have a set of RMBMs, which is supposed to calculate the MAC operations. Also, we have the MAX pooling and activation function unit to perform the neural network. Also, we have some memories that stores the data and the lookup tables. And for this R accumulator, which is supposed to accumulate the results from different RMBMs or different tiles, because as we know that the neural network is relatively large. So for our design, it is very hard to schedule only one RMVM or only one tile to compute uh, the operations. That's why we need this R accumulator. And inside a RMVM, we, of course, we have the R multiplier and the R adder, which is supposed to perform the uh, MAC operations. And then we have um, lasers to provide the light also the uh, microwave resonators and the photodetectors as the filter and finally we will have some register to store the result so how do the register adder and multiplier work here's what i'm going to show you we adapt the register adder from previous work which is built based on one hot encoding it means that for each position it will represent one number only by using this method we can relieve the needs of adc and dacs the basic building block of the raster adder is an electro-optical 2x2 switch. By applying different voltage on it, the light could either go straight or go across of it. And in raster arithmetic, um, the addition could be considered as an injection. It means that for each cement, all the input will have one-on-one -on -one mapping. Previous work shows that it could be implemented by arbitrary slash banished network, which is shown like this. It recursively decompose the network input to two smaller sub-networks. And by using this adder, you will need to pre-calculate the switch states for different operands and then store these states into the lookup table. And however, this is just a one-time calculation. For selected 16-bit system, it is less than 256 bytes. So now when a new operation is sent, we will need to encode operand and read the states from the lookup table and then set the switch accordingly. Then the injected light will be propagated the, to the desired output. Here is an example for a modulo 5 adder here. So before we use it, we will need to calculate what if um, plus 0, plus 1, plus 2, plus 3, and plus 4, we'll, we, that we will need to set up the switch accordingly and then we will store this pre-calculate switch state into the lookup table. Now we have a an operation 3 plus 4. First we will read the plus 4 from the lookup table and then um, and then set the switch state accordingly. Then we will inject the light at port 3 and then the light will be routed accordingly by the set it, um, by the set switch. And finally at port 2 you will reach some light signal over there. And then that's how exactly you can uh, perform this calculation. And for multiplication, it is very similar to the addition. However, there's only one thing that you will need to take care of it, which is zero. Because we all know if you are times zero, that the result will always be zero. 
Thus, we choose a set of 2 by 2 switch and just made the possibility that if you are multiplying by 0, then you will be routed to the output port 0 here. And the rest, we can just simply use an m-1 to m-1 arbitrary size Spanish network routing for it. And all this optical component is WDM capable, which means we can run, um, we can run several operations at the same time. So we can run several operations at the same time. Here's the schematic for the Restore Matrix Retina Application Computing Unit. The RMVM could be considered as a tensor. Except the raster edges and multipliers, we have some other hardware support to guarantee that the system could work properly, including lasers, microring resonators, photo detectors, and so on and so forth. And here is a SEL signal, which is controlled the mouse to choose either the data inside the registers or the bias. The data in the bias comes from the neural network, and the register stores the data that from previous calculation. I would like to emphasize that all the, all the components are WDM capable, which means that we could choose different wavelengths for different operations. I will start with an example to show how exactly this works. Consider that we have a 5x5 input feature and a 2x2 kernel. In order to convert this um, input feature and the kernels, we can decompose it into different wavelengths. So now look at this blue box. So first, we could decompose it as this vector to this vector calculate uh, multiplication. And as we move forward with stride size 1, then the first two columns could, uh, could be considered as this matrix vector multiplication. And each, each row of this matrix will be represented with different wavelengths. So we can compute them at the same time. And in next slide, I will show you how exactly it works cycle by cycle. Here is the pipeline design of a MAC operation. A pipeline increases the throughput and efficiency of a system. And in our design, at cycle 1, both the input feature X and the weight W will be encoded as different signals. And the, for the input feature X, it will be encoded as the light signal here um, with different wavelengths while the weight will be encoded as the selection line of the lookup table, and then it will load the corresponding states of the multip multiplier. And as cycle 2, according to the um, data that we read from the lookup table, we will set up the multiplier accordingly. And then we will inject the light, and then the light will go through this uh, multiplier, and finally, by a set of these micro ring resonators and the photo detectors, we can read the this uh, we can read the result, and this is how exactly the multiplication could be performed here. And as cycle three, it works very similar as cycle one. However, now the light signal and the selection line are not the same anymore. And for the um, input light signal, it depends on the SEL signal. It could be either from the partial sum of the register or the bias. And for the selection line, now it is encoded from the result of the input feature x and the weight from that derived from the last cycle. And as cycle 4, it's similar as cycle 2. Instead, we are not setting up the multiplier. We are setting up the um, this uh, address. Please know that all these adders will be set up at the same time. And then we will do the similar things. We will inject the light. And finally, we will detect our light here. And at cycle 5, it will write back our result to the registers. And this is how our matrix vector multiplication are done. Please note that because of the um, WDM feature, the whole matrix vector multiplication, as I indicated here, could be performed at the same time. We choose sigmoid function as the activation function. However, it is hard to calculate in the rest of the domain. Instead, we expand it as Taylor series, and now it could be considered as a polynomial. And here is the example for a modulo 5 uh, polynomial system. You can use a set of uh, multipliers, uh, MRS and a set of um, raster adders to build it. You will need to pre-calculate all the terms that include x and build a connection accordingly. 
by using this polynomial, you can simply to build the, um, to get the result for the second mode function. The max pool function unit is not as straightforward as normal in the proposed design. Normally, when we try to find out the maximum number, we will do a set of subtraction and the sign detection. However, in rest number system, we don't have a sign bit. Thus, in order to detect a sign, we will need some special method. Here, we choose the one by converting the number from RNS to mixed radius number system through this equation. And it could be simply implemented by a set of the um, subtractor and the multipliers. And all we need to do rest is put our even modulus r1 equals to 2 in the right hand side. And after this process, we will find out the a4, which indicates the number could be either negative or non-negative. The whole process is serial. However, it could be easily pipelined. The overhead is that we will need some latches between each stage. And actually, the max pooling function is the um, most time consuming in our design. So how exactly our work performs? So here is the experimental setup. We use cacti to simulate the electrical memory component, and we use numerical FTDT to simulate our optical switch. And on top of it, we use numerical interconnect for the optical circuit and verify our functionality. The lasers, marker ring resonators, and photo detectors are derived from other work. Same as the interconnect, we choose hypertransport serial link. On top of it, we build our own simulator as a system level design. And we also choose some real benchmark for it. We choose a um, very smaller one, um, Lenet 5. We also choose some large one, VGGs. Also, um, ResNet has been chosen, same as the deep face. Here's the result of the design space exploration. In order to find out the optimal configuration, we swap different parameters, that including WDM size, number of tiles in a chip, and number of RMVMs in a tile. We choose the metric called computation capability, which indicates the number of operations that could be executed per unit time, area, and power as our main metric. And as we can see, the computation capability does not always increase as we enlarge the number of RMVMs that is being utilized. This is because the more RMVMs on the chip, the more power and area is required. As the number of tiles and or the number of RMVMs increases, both the area and power increase. However, the computing throughput does not increase proportionally since the area and power overhead are varied with different coefficients. So after we reach some point, it will decrease. So and here is the optimal configuration for our design. It can reach up to 12.6 giga operations per second per millimeter square per watt. And here is finally we um we can derive our hardware specification. So here is the speed and power analysis if we run real benchmarks on top of our design. Um, we tested um, different number of chips and on the same application and see how it changes. Of course, if you use more chip, it will be faster, but the power consumption will be higher. Uh, majorly, they are coming from the communication because now we will need to talk um, from chip to chip. And if we compare our result to um, GPU NVIDIA Tesla V100, for VGG4 specifically. With, um, with the same power budget, we are 19 times faster than that. Now I would like to conclude our work. We propose the NNARA, a deep neural network accelerator that using raster number system. And we choose a hybrid electro optical component to implement it. And this is a system level CNN accelerator chip. And we build a system level assimilator for experimental estimation and we can reach 19 times faster compared to a state of our GPU with the same power budget. And here are the references. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoy it. You may find more details in our paper. Please feel free to ask me any questions during the Q&A section if you have any. Thank you again and have a nice day.